Buenas tardes, estudiantes. I have a funny, uh, well, it's not really funny. It's a very serious and dangerous book. It's called Hidden Dangers. Seek and find 13 of the world's deadliest animals. I hope none of them are in your apartments right now. Um, this book is written by Lola Schaefer and illustrated by Tim Armstrong. Let's see what we can learn. There's a note of caution in the beginning. Here it goes here at the end papers. Hidden dangers. Seek and find 13 of the world's deadliest animals. Caution. Like us, animals try to avoid danger, but if someone or something invades their territories or startles them, they'll use defense mechanisms to protect themselves. In some cases, that defense is nothing more than a harsh sting. Other times, it may be venomous tentac tentacles, barbed quills, or poison oozing skin. Just like in the real world, you may not see all of the animals in this book at first glance. Take a few moments. Look under leaves, in the waves, or on a mountain ledge to find all of the creatures. Sometimes danger is right in front of you. How many deadly animals are there? Answers to the seek and find are on the last page. Falling off a mountain with a deep bleeding wound will kill you. See that mountain goat standing on a log? Look at those horns. They're sharp enough to rip skin and cut through flesh. Being rammed with these horns is brutal or deadly. If you or any other animal intrude on a mountain goat's territory, it's going to defend itself with a good butt of its horns. If the goring doesn't cause a serious injury, it, and it usually does, falling down the face of a mountain will. A mountain goat only protects itself if it feels trapped or threatened. So always hike with friends or a guide and stay on the marked trails. If a mountain goat should cross your path, remain calm. Hold still and study the trail behind you. Take a slow, a dozen slow steps backward and turn and enjoy the return hike. Have you ever seen a mountain goat? Want to be dead in just two minutes? No? Then don't touch the bright glistening skin on that frog. Most rainforest plants and animals will never hurt you, but the golden poison dart frog's skin is covered in a toxin that immediately attacks the nervous system of, of its enemies. If you touch this creature, the poison can numb your skin, your hand, and maybe your whole arm. If you accidentally get a drop or two of the toxin in your eyes, mouth, or an open sore, it will paralyze your lungs and stop your heart. You will be dead in minutes. But this doesn't have to happen to you. When exploring, if you come to a golden poison dart frog, stop. Admire its tiny size and bright color, but remember that its skin is coated with enough poison to kill 8 to 20 people. Then turn and walk away. The frog will not follow you, and you will have just seen the animal with the most deadly toxin in the world. The golden um, poison arrow frog, or the poison dart frog, rather, is in the Academy of Sciences. You can see it when they open up again. What animal is this? Prickly piercing quills jab skin. Ouch! The North American porcupine is covered in 25,000 to 30,000 quills. If you approach one, it might rattle its quills as a warning. If you come closer, the porcupine will turn its back and push its quills to stand straight. Then it will strike with its tail, ramming its quills into you. Your body heat will make the layers of tiny barbs on the tips of the quills expand holding the quills in place. You may need pliers to pull them out. When hiking through the woods or near a forest, keep an eye out for porcupines. They are mostly nocturnal, so if you hike at night, make sure you have a flashlight. 
Porcupines are slow moving animals and will not attack unless you get too close or startle them. They will only use their quills to defend themselves. If a porcupine crosses your path, back away. Then turn around and get out of there. What is this? Don't crowd a shark. A great hammerhead, like some other sharks, will defend its territory if threatened with its teeth. If one of these 500 to 1,000 pound creatures confuses you with an enemy or a tasty fish, swim and swim fast. The hammerhead will strike with its head and bludgeon you again and again until you are weak and weary. Then it will open its powerful jaws and shred you with its serrated teeth. You will be dead. Some sharks, even hammerheads, occasionally come close to beaches. To avoid meeting one head to head, swim and boogie board with friends or family close to shore. If you are in the water and you see a dorsal fin or a shark head coming your way, remain calm. Yell help loudly two or three times. Walk or swim quickly to the beach or the nearest boat ladder. Your life depends on it. Watch out! A death stalker scorpion has its tail lifted over its head. That tail is sharp, painful, and ready to sting sending venom into its victim. Many scorpions live in warm, dry climates such as deserts or tropical grasslands. If you alarm or threaten one, it will raise its tail, jab its telson into you, and release venom into your body. This sting can cause many different reactions, including intense pain, swelling of the skin, numbness, and in some cases, death. Since scorpions are nocturnal and hide during the day, it's almost impossible to see them. Always examine a site well before setting up a tent or sitting on the ground. Rake away any loose bark, grass, or pebbles. If you do see a scorpion, don't panic. Just get away. If a scorpion crawls on your clothing or skin, shake it off. Don't swat it. If you ever get stung by a scorpion, treat it like a bee or a wasp sting and immediately visit a doctor. They're so tiny, it's kind of hard to believe that their venom could hurt you, but it can, so you don't want to touch them. Yow! The sting of the tarantula hawk wasp will hurt, hurt badly, for two or three minutes. It is said to be the most painful sting of any wasp and the skin around the puncture wound will swell, throb, and itch with the venom for hours or days. The female tarantula hawk wasp is not an aggressive insect, but she will sting if threatened or provoked. Once One wasp sting is not life-threatening unless you have an allergy to the venom. But unlike honeybees, one female wasp can sting again and again and again, and a whole swarm of wasps can sting you until you're dead. Enjoy the outdoors, but beware of wasps. If you see one coming near you, back off and wave your hands around your head to disturb the air around you, not swat it. If you see a group of wasps, stay away. If you do get stung, treat the wound as you would any insect sting. Carefully remove the stinger, wash, and soap, wa wash, wash with soap and water, and apply ice to the area. However, if you are allergic to bee or wasp venom, take the proper medication immediately and tell an adult. When I, um, Orla was a baby, I was walking backwards looking at a rocket that shot off and I stepped on a bee's, a wasp's nest and they stung me a lot of times, but I was okay. It all worked out. But stay away from wasp's nests is good advice. Slap! An angry alligator can whack you with a 200 pound tail grab you with its large jaws and drag you to the bottom of the river to drown. If you enter an American alligator's territory, this wetland creature defends itself with its tail first. If that doesn't knock you senseless, then it might decide to grab you with its jaws, which pack a force of 2,125 pounds. 
Ouch! The alligator's final attack is to pull you underwater until you're dead. When you're exploring swamps or marshes, remain on the wooden walkways and obey all signs. If you're traveling in a boat, keep your hands and feet inside. And of course, never throw food to attract an alligator. If you meet an alligator on land, confuse it. Run right four or five steps, then left four or five steps, zigzagging back and forth. If possible, climb a tree or hide behind a large object. Alligators are big and powerful and surprisingly fast runners, but they are easily fooled. I learned a song on the piano when I was little. Never smile at a crocodile. Alligators are smaller than crocodiles, but they can still move pretty quickly. Don't fight a 6,000 pound unpredictable hippopotamus. You won't win. Female and male hippos attack and sometimes without a reason or warning. Did you know they were one of the most dangerous animals in the world? If you're visiting Africa and get between a hippo and its source of water, get inside its territory or get near a calf, you'll be sorry. Whether you're on land or in a boat, it will charge, bang its head into you again and again, then maul you with teeth that can be one foot long. That'll be it for you. Did you know that more people are killed every year by hippos than by sharks? To avoid this fate, stay far, far away from the home of the hippopotamus. The only safe way to view a hippo is from a jeep or a boat, a very fast one. Since a hippo can run nearly 20 miles per hour, you would need a quick getaway. Never get out of the vehicle for a closer look. It could be the last thing you ever do. Fangs. Fangs that inject venom. Venom that kills. Snake bites always hurt, but the venomous bite of the aquatic coral snake can kill you within 30 minutes. This venom attacks the nervous system and paralyzes your lungs, which results in suffocation. The aquatic coral snake does not seek out fights, but it will defend itself. If you come too close, try to grab it or step on it, the snake will strike. When visiting the rainforest, make sure you are always with someone who is familiar with the plants and animals of the area. Wear thick, sturdy shoes, watch where you walk, and remain on marked trails. If you see a colorful snake with red and yellow stripes, stop. Keep your hands to yourself and stay away. While in a boat, keep your hands and feet inside. If you leave the aquatic coral snake alone, it will be happy. And so will you. Rip, tear, slash. Better hope it's not your skin in the talons of a bald eagle. If so, you're in trouble. Usually an eagle uses its talons to grab live prey. But if you come too close to its nest, its young, or the bird itself, it will lift one of its legs and extend four pointed talons. With one swipe, those razor-like claws can tear open your chest or arm. The scratches are deep, painful, and the eagle's way of saying, leave me alone. When climbing trees, be on the lookout for eagle's nests. If you see one, climb back down. Since most eagles build their nests high up in trees or on poles, it is easier and safer to admire them from the ground. Eagles are majestic creatures capable of killing a deer or a wolf. They are usually not interested in humans. Usually. I'd rather not find out. Rather watch them from the ground. If a moose charges, Beware, it could stomp you with its hooves or gore you with its antlers. A female moose will do anything to protect her calf. Weighing in at up to 900 pounds, she can knock you down with one hit of her body. She might then rise up on her back hooves and bring her front hooves crashing down on you. A male is aggressive during mating season and will charge with his antlers to maul, stab, or throw you around like a rag doll. You might live, but you might not. Since the number of moose is increasing, it's a lot more likely that you might see one while hiking in or near Alaska or Canada. If a moose starts to come your way, churn and run away. Usually it will stop running after a short distance. But if the moose doesn't slow up, 
Hide. Hide behind a large tree, trunk, or rock. Roll into a tight ball, placing your arms over your head for protection. When the moose cannot see you, it will walk away. Later, so can you. I was camping once in Glacier National Park, I think, in um, Wisconsin. No. I forget what state it is in now. Uh, oh, Glacier is in Montana. And in the Grand Tetons, I think I was. Anyway, we saw this moose and it was drinking water. It was far away, so we just stayed still and were quiet. But it was so big. It was just drinking water. Relax. You might see these wash up on the shore of the ocean, on the beach. 6,000 inches of tentacles that sting, puncture, and kill. This is the nightmare in store for the person who comes in contact with the Australian box jellyfish. This creature will defend itself by draping some of its 60 tentacles against your skin. Each tentacle is covered in thousands of stinging capsules that fire tiny tubes or harpoons into your skin. They're like hooks and deposit deadly venom. This toxin attacks the heart, skin, and nerves, which causes you to go into shock and die within minutes. If you visit Northern Australia, stay out of the ocean. The box jellyfish lives in the coastal waters all around that side of the country. Their numbers are higher from October to May, but they are always present. Since it is almost impossible to see the tentacles in the water before they touch your skin, stay on shore. If you are ever close to a box jellyfish, let's hope it is on the other side of a glass wall in an aquarium. That's the best place to see these dangerous animals. Let's see this way. Scratch, scrape, slash. If you get too close to a grizzly bear, your arms and legs could be ripped beyond repair with just one swipe of its claws. When a grizzly is concerned, surprised, or protecting cubs, it first might roar or run toward you, then turn away. If it still feels threatened, the bear will then charge. The claws on its front paws are three to four inches long. Wait a minute. Could be like that. These are the claws that the grizzly bear will use to maul, scrape, and tear. Stay away from grizzly bears. If you are hiking where there are grizzlies, carry bear spray and try to make noise as you hike. Singing is a good trick. Grizzlies will often avoid people if they hear them coming. You do not want to surprise a grizzly bear. If you meet one in the wild, stand still. If the bear does not approach you, back away slowly. If it does approach, use your bear spray on its head, then run away. My friends live in Alaska and they have grizzly bears who have cubs and they come and climb the tree in front of their house. They stay inside when the bears come. Be prepared. Whenever you are out exploring, hiking, or canoeing, be prepared. For what? For any kind of accident or mishap. If you are out of sight of a nature center, lodge, or mini mart, it's wise to have a few safety items with you just in case. Pack your backpack with these essentials to guarantee a safe and speedy return. These are, these are the 10 essentials. I think they're 10. Flashlight. You might find yourself hiking after dark or through a cave. A flashlight will help you. Here it is. Will help you stay on a safe path. A signal flag or a flare. In case of an extreme emergency where you cannot move from your location, you can wave a signal flag or launch a flare into the evening sky to help a rescue team come and find you. Cell phone. Someone in your group needs to have a phone so you can call for help if needed. Energy bars or nuts and dried fruit trail mix. You'll use a lot of calories while out hiking, especially if you have to do any running away or have to spend longer outdoors than you had planned. It's good to have a quick and easy snack that will give you a boost of energy. Bandages. Always carry eight to 10 bandages for blisters or wounds. Water. You need a lot of water when you go to the Grand Canyon. It gets very hot or the desert. 
Carry 18 to 24 ounces of water per person for every three to four hours you plan on being out in nature. This will provide enough water for drinking as well as additional water in case you need to clean a wound. Rope. Bring a five to seven foot length of rope in case you need to hoist, support, tie, bundle, carry, or climb. Map. Where's the map? I don't see the map. Do you? Map, compass, or GPS. There's the compass. It's easy to get turned around, especially when you're not familiar with the area. Make a mental note of landmarks as you travel so you can look for these landmarks on your return trip. If that fails, any of these three items will help you get back on course. Do you know um, how to use a compass? Some people have a compass on their watch now. Antibiotic cream or spray. Use this on a wound before applying to a bandage. Anti-itch cream. Depending on the time of year, you could run into a wide variety of insects and creepy crawlers. If you should get a painful sting or bite, these creams will help reduce swelling and itching. Matches. If you are lost or need to remain out during the night, a campfire can provide warmth, security, a way to cook food, and a light to help others find you. Antiseptic wipes. These will come in handy if anyone falls and has an abrasion or if you need to clean a drinking or eating surface. Loud whistle. One person needs to carry a whistle in case the cell phone doesn't work and you need to alert someone to your location. It can also be used as a warning signal. It can be used to scare away a bear too. A lot of backpacks now have whistles on them, which is nice. Poison, venom, what's the difference? As it turns out, poison and venom are quite similar in their chemical makeup, and in some cases, they're identical substances. Both poisons and venoms are toxins. The difference between the two is that how they are delivered to other creatures. Poisonous animals, such as the golden poison dart frog and puffer fish, use their toxins mostly to discourage or ward off predators. The poison is transferred to another creature by absorption, through touching, inhalation by sniffing or ingestion when licked or eaten. Venomous animals such as the death stalker scorpion and the aquatic coral snake use their toxins mostly to capture and kill prey. Venom is different from poison because it is injected from the host animal into another creature through their fangs or through their stinger. Frog uh, fangs, telsons, spines, barbs, spurs, harpoons, or the animal's teeth deliver the venom directly into the skin or bloodstream of their prey. The Asian tiger snake is very unusual because unlike most animals, it is poisonous and venomous. This snake produces both a venom which, it, with, which, which it injects with its fangs and a poison which it secretes around its neck and can be absorbed by the touch of an enemy. Avoid this animal, it's double trouble. So I think poison is more to defend the animal and venom is to catch their prey. What do you think, are toxic plants poisonous or venomous? Answer on the facing page, what do you think? I'll tell you tomorrow. Thank you for listening, I hope you enjoyed this story, Hidden Dangers, and now you know what to do in case you run into one of these animals when you're out on your walk. Enjoy your evening. See you tomorrow.